In Twin Pines, a farming village nestled among rolling green hills, the past always intertwined with the present. The fields were a golden mosaic of wheat and corn, where agricultural techniques passed down through generations remained unchanged, a testament to their enduring effectiveness. Charlene Creer, a young woman with brown eyes and her hair tied in a ponytail, often strolled through the fields at dawn, feeling the dew beneath her bare feet. She loved listening to the stories of the elders, especially her grandfather Albert, who always wore his withered straw hat. On a typical morning, Charlene found her grandfather bent over one of his plantations, observing the corn's growth. She approached, her face lighting up with a smile. Good morning, Grandpa. The corn looks good this year, she said. Albert slowly rose, leaning on his hoe, and smiled at his granddaughter. Ah, Charlene, this corn is the same that your great-grandfather planted, the same seeds, the same soil, the same technique. And look, he said, pointing to the golden field, it has never failed us. As they walked together, Charlene inquired, Grandpa, have you ever thought about trying something new? I mean, not changing everything, but maybe a new technique or two. Albert looked at her, his eyes reflecting a mix of surprise and curiosity. Charlene, tradition is the backbone of this place. I learned from my father, just as he learned from his. It's what has kept us strong. A little further along, Mrs. Jenkins, an elderly woman with a cane, waved to them. Good morning, Albert. Charlene, what a glorious morning. I hope this year is as good as the others. Charlene smiled politely. Good morning, Mrs. Jenkins. Yes, we hope so. Mrs. Jenkins nodded. Our traditions have never failed us. The young may have their new ideas, but it's the wisdom of the years that has sustained us. Remember that, dear. As they continued their stroll, Charlene felt a burning desire for innovation, but also a deep respect for tradition. She wondered if there would be room for both in Twin Pines. The sky above Twin Pines had been tinted with a faded blue for weeks, with sparse clouds that held no promise of rain. The ground beneath Charlene's feet had become hard and cracked, contrasting with the once fertile and moist soil that the Creer family had cultivated for generations. As Charlene walked through the arid fields, the dry corn leaves crackled beneath her steps. Her younger brother, Danny, ran behind her, holding an almost empty water jug. Charlene, look. It's all we could get from the well today. Charlene's eyes filled with worry. This won't last, Danny. We need to find a solution. At night, the Creer family gathered around the dining table. The air was heavy, not only due to the lack of food, but also because of the looming decisions. Charlene began hesitantly, Dad, I think we should consider maybe moving to town until this passes. We can't go on like this. Her father, Robert Creer, a sturdy man with worry lines etched on his face, looked at his daughter. Charlene, this land has been in our family for generations. Abandoning it would be like giving up our own identity. Charlene's mother, Pauline, interjected, her voice gentle but firm. Robert, we can't keep feeding our family with memories and pride. If we stay, we may lose everything. Danny, wide-eyed and teary, said, I don't want to leave, Mom. This is our home. Charlene took her brother's hands and looked deep into his eyes. Sometimes we have to make tough choices to protect the ones we love, Danny. The days that followed were marked by heated debates and shed tears. The relentless drought persisted, wells dried up, and hope dwindled. The possibility of abandoning their ancestral land, once unthinkable, became an imminent reality for the Creer family. The Twin Pines Library was an old building with dark wooden shelves filled with dusty and musty-smelling books. It was Charlene's refuge on the hottest days, a place where she could lose herself in distant worlds. But one day, while searching for something to distract her mind from the drought that had befallen the village, Charlene came across a volume with a worn cover and the image of a lush green field, sustainable agriculture, feeding the future. With curiosity racing in her heart, Charlene nestled herself in a quiet corner and began flipping through the pages. The words spoke of techniques she had never heard of, crop rotation, rainwater harvesting, and integrated pest management. 
She felt her pulse quicken as she read about composting and how to turn organic waste into nutrient-rich fertilizers. This is incredible, she murmured to herself, envisioning Twin Pines' arid soil coming back to life with these methods. For weeks, Charlene returned to the library, always in secret. Armed with a notebook and pen, she took meticulous notes, drew diagrams, and sketched out plans. She knew that the village, anchored in traditions, might not readily accept these revolutionary ideas, so she decided to keep her studies a secret, at least for now. On a particularly hot afternoon, while Charlene was engrossed in her notes, Mrs. Jenkins, the librarian with sharp eyes, approached her. What do you have there, dear? You seem quite interested. Charlene, surprised, looked up, blushing. Oh, it's just agriculture, Mrs. Jenkins. I'm trying to learn something new. The elderly woman adjusted her glasses and peered at the book. Ah, sustainable agriculture. My husband used to talk about it before he passed away. He said it was the future. She winked at Charlene. But remember, the future isn't always welcomed with open arms. Charlene nodded, taking the warning to heart. As the drought continued, she was determined to use what she was learning to make a difference, even if she had to face resistance. And with each page she turned, each note she took, she was filled with hope and fascination for what lay ahead. The sun's rays illuminated the small piece of land behind the Creer house, where Charlene had marked out a corner exclusively for her experiment. There, she prepared the soil with compost made from kitchen organic waste and set up a rudimentary rainwater harvesting system. Her brother, Danny, watched her with a mixture of admiration and concern. Charlene, what are you doing? Dad will be furious if he finds out, he said. She paused for a moment, wiping sweat from her forehead. I know, Danny, but I have to try. If what I've read is true, we can save our land. It didn't take long for Charlene's actions to become the talk of the town among the residents of Twin Pines. The elderly, sitting in the shade of the trees, whispered to each other, looking disdainfully at the corner of the field where Charlene worked. Mr. Hawthorne, the village's oldest and respected by many, approached Charlene one day, his face stern and his tone reproachful. What do you think you're doing, girl? These are Twin Pines lands. We follow traditions, not the whims of reckless youth. Charlene stood up and faced the old man with determination in her eyes. Mr. Hawthorne, I respect our tradition. But if we don't try something new, we may lose everything our ancestors built. I'm just asking for a chance. A murmur passed through the crowd that had gathered around them. Mrs. Palmer, a neighbor and family friend, approached and said, Charlene, dear, we're all suffering from this drought. But trying these unconventional techniques can be risky. What would your grandparents say if they saw this? With a pause, Charlene responded in a soft yet firm voice, they would say to take care of the land and the people who depend on it. And that's what I'm trying to do, Mrs. Palmer. The sun was setting when Robert, Charlene's father, finally approached her, his gaze heavy. You've always been stubborn, Charlene. I hope from the bottom of my heart that you're right. She smiled, looking at the piece of land that now held her hope. I hope so too, Dad, for all of us. In Charlene's place, would you proceed with this risky idea, which could fail and become a source of shame for the family? Or would you persist, even with so many people opposing it? Please state your position below. The days were long and arduous for Charlene. Each morning, she worked on the small piece of land she had set aside for her experiment, tending to the plants and monitoring the irrigation system. The murmurs of the Twin Pines residents were a constant presence, like a persistent hum in her ears. That queer girl is losing her mind, some would comment. This will never work, others would mutter. However, amid the skeptical voices, the memory of a dear friend echoed in her mind like a beacon. Jake had been her childhood companion, always by her side in games and mischief. But Jake had a distinguishing trait, he dreamed big, always talking about the world beyond the village's borders and the wonders that existed out there. Sitting in the shade of a tree after another exhausting day, Charlene pulled a crumpled and faded letter from her pocket. 
It was the last letter Jake had sent her just before leaving for the big city in pursuit of his dreams. She unfolded the paper and read the words for the thousandth time. Charlene, always remember to look beyond the mountains. There's a world out there full of possibilities. Dream big, just like me, and never, ever give up. Tears welled up in Charlene's eyes as she remembered how Jake passionately spoke about traveling, experiencing new cultures, and bringing back innovative ideas to Twin Pines. He believed that progress and tradition could coexist harmoniously, and although many in the village considered him a naive dreamer, to Charlene, he was an inspiration. She stood up, wiping away the tears and looking determinedly at the horizon. For Jake, for myself, for Twin Pines, she whispered to herself, the community's resistance was strong, but Charlene's determination was even stronger. Inspired by Jake's memory and her burning desire to make a difference, she decided to face the skepticism and adversity, trusting in her vision and the hope for a better future for all. Days passed, and with the arrival of spring, Charlene's plot of land began to show signs of life that most of Twin Pines hadn't seen in a long time. Green shoots emerged vigorously from the soil, and soon vibrant and healthy flowers adorned her small experimental field. The corn, once meager and weak in traditional lands, stood tall and robust under Charlene's innovative care. One morning, as Charlene tended to her crops, she noticed a familiar figure standing at the edge of her field. It was Tom Mitchell, one of the most experienced farmers in the village. With an appraising look, he observed the progress of Charlene's land before approaching. I'm impressed, Charlene, Tom admitted, scratching his graying beard. I've never seen anything like this in Twin Pines. Charlene smiled, grateful for the validation. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. I just tried a few different things. Tom wasn't the only one to take notice. In the following days, a steady stream of farmers visited Charlene's field with expressions ranging from genuine curiosity to resolute skepticism. Some, like young Emily Roberts, sought advice and showed interest in learning the new techniques. I saw what you've done here, Charlene, Emily said, her eyes shining with hope. Can you teach me? However, not all visits were friendly. One afternoon, as Charlene shared her knowledge with some interested farmers, a harsh voice cut through the conversation. It was Mr. Barton, known for his strict adherence to traditions. What do you think you're doing, Charlene Creer? He growled accusingly, pointing at the flourishing field. Are you trying to erase everything our ancestors built, disrespecting the elders and their traditions? Charlene took a deep breath, facing the challenge. I'm not trying to destroy our tradition, Mr. Barton, she replied calmly. I'm trying to save our land and our people. Traditions are important, but we need to adapt to survive. A murmur ran through the crowd. Many silently agreed with Charlene, while others cast disapproving looks. Regardless of differing opinions, one thing was certain, Charlene had initiated a revolution in Twin Pines, and things would never be the same again. The dissenting voices against Charlene's techniques still echoed strongly throughout Twin Pines. Murmurs had turned into heated debates in the town squares and markets. Sarah Williams, one of the most influential farmers in the community and a fervent advocate of traditions, led the criticism. These innovations from the storm, Charlene, are just fads, Sarah declared at a community meeting, her voice laden with disdain. We are wasting precious time and resources following these fanciful ideas. Charlene, always composed, responded patiently, trying to explain the long-term benefits of her approaches. However, the resistance seemed unyielding. Many farmers, influenced by Sarah, hesitated to change, clinging to what they knew. Then, the winds changed, literally. The sky over Twin Pines quickly darkened, signaling the approach of a violent storm. Fierce winds blew, and in no time, a torrential rain fell upon the village. Streets turned into rivers, and the soil, saturated with water, began to erode. At the height of the storm, while villagers sought shelter in their homes, Charlene rushed to her field, concerned for her crops. However, to her surprise and relief, her irrigation and drainage system, an essential part of her new techniques, was working flawlessly. The water flowed orderly, 
preventing erosion and protecting the plants. When the storm finally subsided and the sun shone again, the devastation was evident. Entire fields cultivated in the traditional manner were destroyed with ruined harvests and eroded soil. The contrast was stark. While much of the village faced the loss of their livelihoods, Charlene's plot of land remained intact, with the plants even stronger and more vibrant. Sarah Williams, with a somber demeanor, slowly walked over to Charlene's field, gazing at the healthy crops. She sighed deeply, her eyes showing a mixture of regret and admiration. Maybe there's something to these techniques of yours after all, she admitted, looking at Charlene with compassion and without triumph. Charlene reached out to Sarah. There's still time, Sarah. We can rebuild together. The storm, though destructive, became the catalyst for profound change in Twin Pines, uniting the community toward a more sustainable future. The storm had left deep marks on Twin Pines. However, instead of signaling the end, it brought an opportunity for renewal. Charlene's field was an oasis of hope amid desolation, and her resilience became living proof of the potential of modern techniques. Michael Miller, a young farmer who had previously had doubts about the innovations, was the first to approach Charlene. I saw what your techniques did, Charlene, he admitted, looking at the ground. I lost nearly everything in the storm. I'm willing to learn. Would you teach me? And it wasn't just Michael, many others, including some of the most fervent critics, now approached Charlene seeking guidance. They had seen firsthand the effectiveness of her practices and wished to adapt, recognizing the need for a more formal approach. Charlene transformed an abandoned barn into an improvised classroom. In no time, Charlene's agriculture classes became a gathering point for farmers in the region. During one of her workshops, Charlene demonstrated the importance of crop rotation. By changing the crop in a field each season, she explained, we can keep the soil healthy and productive, avoiding nutrient depletion. Lena Davis, an elderly woman who had farmed according to traditions her whole life, raised her hand. But isn't this against our tradition? Charlene smiled gently. Traditions have brought us this far and have their value, Lena. But one must adapt to survive and thrive. We're not abandoning the past, we're building a better future. Charlene's workshops became a pillar of the community, and the atmosphere in Twin Pines changed drastically. Farmers who once eyed each other with suspicion and skepticism now collaborated, sharing knowledge and resources. Each day, more fields flourished under the new techniques, and the village, which once feared its imminent demise, now looked to the future with hope and determination. United under Charlene's visionary guidance, the morning sun reflected on the vast fields of Twin Pines. For the first time in years, the fields were laden with rich and abundant crops. In contrast to the previous dark times, the air was filled with vibrant energy, as if the very land were celebrating its renewal. Farmers walked through the fields, their eyes shining with pride as they witnessed the fruits of their hard work and adaptation. I've never seen anything like this in my life, murmured Samuel Carter, a seasoned farmer, as he caressed a perfectly formed ear of corn. Beside him, his wife Olivia nodded, tears forming in her eyes. Our grandparents would have been so proud. In the village center, a fair was in full swing. Tents were erected, and families displayed their goods, from fresh vegetables and grains to homemade preserves and freshly baked bread. There was even a booth dedicated exclusively to Charlene's techniques, where farmers could learn more about the sustainable practices that had transformed Twin Pines. Lucy Mitchell, the young owner of the local bakery, was enthusiastic. Before, we could barely get enough ingredients to make our bread, she told the customer as she handed him a warm piece of apple cake. Now, look at this. We're creating new recipes every week. As the fair unfolded, Benjamin, the mayor of Twin Pines, took the makeshift stage in the center of the market. Two years ago, he began, his voice strong and clear, our survival was in doubt. But today, thanks to the courage and determination of many, especially Charlene, we not only survived, but thrived. Pointing to the crops around him, he continued, this isn't just food, it's evidence of our resilience, our ability to adapt and grow. 
And now, with goods to sell to neighboring villages, we are on the path to a prosperous future. At the end of his speech, a chorus of applause rang out. Charlene, though embarrassed by the attention, smiled, knowing she had helped her beloved village turn the page and enter a new chapter of prosperity and hope. In the weeks that followed the abundant harvest, Charlene realized that to ensure the continued success and innovation in Twin Pines, it would be vital to share and perpetuate her knowledge. And so, with the help of the community, she began the construction of something never before seen in the region, an agricultural school. The chosen location was a fertile field near the village's entrance. During construction, the enthusiasm was palpable. Carpenters, masons, and volunteers of all ages came together to erect a building that would house the future of local agriculture. Charlene, do you really believe that today's youth will want to learn about farming? Questioned James, a middle-aged farmer, as he hammered a nail. She responded with a determined look. They not only will want to, James, but they'll need to. If we want Twin Pines to continue thriving, we need to ensure our young ones are prepared. Twin Pines Agricultural School opened its doors with a grand celebration. There was joy in the air, and children ran through the courtyard, marveling at the classrooms, laboratories, and extensive experimental fields. At the inauguration ceremony, Mrs. Jenkins, the librarian who had provided Charlene with the book that changed everything, said with a choked voice, I see in this building not just bricks and mortar, but the future of our community. Charlene, you've given us a gift, a gift of knowledge. However, the true celebration was in the classrooms, where young people and even some adults gathered eagerly to learn. There, they would not only study agricultural techniques, but also the importance of sustainability and innovation. Night fell over Twin Pines with a street party. Lanterns lit up the night sky, and music echoed throughout the village. At the center of the celebration was Charlene, dancing and laughing with her neighbors. To Charlene, shouted Benjamin, the mayor, raising his glass. The bearer of the seeds of change. As the party continued, one thing became clear. Twin Pines had not only survived adversity, but was also poised for a bright future, thanks to Charlene's vision and determination. Thank you for joining us today on Deep Stories. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video.